Hey, hey, what's up? Your girl G here. Welcome back to my channel. It is a new week. It is Monday. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Um, so we're going to get right into it, you guys. We are going to talk about Candy and the gang. Welcome to, what did she say? Don't you want to hang with Candy and the gang? I'm not going to lie. Their intro song went a little bit different than I thought it was. It went a little bit more, you know, pop than I expected. If that's the words I can think of. When it went a little bit more pop. I was expecting a little bit more, you know, bass up in that bitch, you know. But it's okay. It's okay, Candy. We get it, okay? Uh, but yeah, Candy and the gang, you know, it's become a cute little yang, yang, yang. Yeah. Candy and the gang, yang, yang, yang. Uh, it's become a cute little something. Everybody's enjoying watching it. Um, it's definitely starting to um, unfold just as far as storylines go, as far as, you know, who's becoming favorites. Definitely uh, top of the list of favorites is Brian. Everybody's loving Brian. I love Brian. Second would be Torin. Um, as far as like, who do I like and as far as who's like good for TV, I definitely, Brian number one, Torin number two, um, Dominique number three so far, um, Shondrika number four, those are kind of like where I'm, I'm going right now as far as like who I'm vibing with, but Brian he is just too damn funny. He kills me with that hold your mule. Hold your mule now. He, when he says that hold your mule, that shit takes me out. I don't know why, but it's just like so funny. Um, but yeah, Candy and the Gang, you guys. It was uh, it was a pretty good episode. It was a lot, but not a lot at the same time. So let's go ahead and break down the episode, you guys. If you're new to my channel, hey, how are you doing? Appreciate you for tuning in. Hope you had a good weekend. Go ahead and make sure you hit that subscribe button, okay? Don't you come over to this channel and not subscribe. All right, become a member of the Juice Box crew. Y'all know what to do. Follow Instagram and Twitter. Tag, post, share, all that good stuff. Y'all know what to do. Let's get into the episode, okay? Um... All right, actually, what do the freak we open up with? I watched it one time, so if I um, missed something or I didn't get go too deep into it, I apologize. Oh, no, okay, so we open up with uh, Chandrika getting that ass chewed out, okay? Uh, Candy and Todd basically told her, look, we heard you had some things to say. You talking about is basically saying that, you know, we don't give a f about the restaurant. Uh, Candy and Todd, it's kind of hard as a viewer to feel like what Chandrika uh, is saying ain't true. Because how is it that you claim you give a about the restaurant, but you know every goddamn two weeks the restaurant is losing power and y'all ain't bought a generator? Like, does that sound like something uh, owners who give a about a restaurant would do? Like knowing that, oh, the power shuts down? And, you know, that stops business. And then the the customers who come in who are eating and enjoying our food are burning the fuck up, you know, while they're trying to enjoy their catfish and, you know, macaroni and cheese. That doesn't taste the same on Friday as it did on Tuesday. You know, I just, I just, you know, Candy and Todd, y'all making it real hard to, like, try to put this blame on everybody in the restaurant. When something fails or when something is not going according to plan... The people who first, okay, who first need to be looked at are the owners and leaders because they, it's a trickle effect. It starts at the top and works its way down. So Candy and Todd, what's going on with y'all that is trickling down of the I don't give a fuckness, you know, and it started with Todd because we know Todd is kind of the more on the restaurant side you know we know candy like basically todd is the the runner and operator of the restaurants and candy's just the name basically so todd actually we see how we we see why the restaurant is the way it is with how todd was acting later on in the episode i'm gonna get into his ass later um but yeah so chandrika's like well i'm just you know i i just don't know what to say you know who told you and they were like we we can't tell you. And so she's like, well, I wasn't the only one saying nothing. You know, a lot of people had stuff to say. So Chandrika feels like, bitch, if I'm going down 
we all going down. Okay, so she want to find out who the rat is. But she basically told, you know, Kenny Todd is just kind of like, you know, the management ain't going right. Seems like nobody wants to work together. People are lazy at their job. So, you know, what, how am I supposed to feel? And then here go Todd. All he, wanna, all he keeps wanting to tell people, just do your job. Just do your job. Like, you know, if we need everybody to work together. You know, just do your job. And it's like, how do you want me to do my job if and it's copacetic at the restaurant? That's the problem. I can't just do my job in an environment that doesn't, isn't productive to me doing my damn job, Todd. Ooh. He just really pissed me off this episode. Um, but yeah, so she walks off and um, she goes into the restaurant and basically tells, uh, who did she tell first? Who did she tell first? I think Brandon maybe? Yeah, she told Brandon he shot and now you sitting here thinking, ooh, what I got, what, what, what part do I play in this? And then they do the flashback and then you realize you had Sean Drinker ass on um on a uh, speakerphone and Don Juan was listening at the same goddamn time as her going the fuck off, okay? Uh so Brandon just kinda sitting there looking like with his big old lips, just sitting there looking like Dang, that's so crazy. Ooh, damn, I don't even know how they got that. That's so crazy. So she's like, Yeah, I'ma look for Patrick and Melvin because I know it was Patrick. She was like, Some tell me it was Patrick, you know? I just know it was him. So you know what? I'm gonna find that nigga, okay? So that's what she do. She 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 go to find um Patrick, okay? Patrick was over there with big old Melvin going to get him some juicy juice. And she walks up to him and she was like, "Hey, what's up? You know, let me let me let me talk to you." And as Jamie said, "Let me let me call you to the front, okay? You know, let me come over here to the front." Shout out to Jamie. Uh, she said, uh, "Look, now I just got done, you know, getting my ass chewed out from Candy and Todd." And just kind of see, it, you know, apparently somebody told them that I had some things to say about the restaurant. Basically saying that, you know, I, I feel like they don't give a damn about the restaurant. And, um, was it you? And then Patrick, he just kind of like, duh. Like, he just, y'all, something about Patrick just reads doo -doo -doo to me. Like, I just, and the way he talks. And then he makes this face and his lip, he just be kind of be just, his mouth low key be open just like, and like a flock of go in his mouth. Like it's just, it's always just open. Like I just can't with, I just cannot with Patrick. But he was like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, you know, what, what makes you think that I said something? And she was like, that's why I'm asking. Like, I'm just assuming. And so Melvin Melvin all of a sudden went from teddy bear to grizzly bear and he was the he basically was playing captain save a hoe with Patrick because he know Patrick said that shit so he he basically bought like he just kind of you know all of a sudden swelled up in the chest and then like try to well if you just coming over here making assumptions there ain't no point in having this conversation then like it's, we don't even need to be having this conversation right now you know it, this don't even make no sense and so she was like i'm just saying you know it's a bunch of bullshit and he was like or he was like yeah this is a bunch of bullshit she's like it is a bunch of bullshit which is why i'm coming to talk to you so if you you didn't say it you ain't got to get all hype with me i'm just coming to check so she ends up walking away but melvin hey slow your roll bruh like we like you you know cute cuddly teddy bear but i didn't like how you tried to boss up on shandrika like that and clearly your cousin who's a punk punk ass nigga okay who gonna sit there in the confessionals and be all, be all, you know, he wanna be all swollen in the chest talking about, you know, I don't, I don't never got no problem saying nothing, you know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm always, you know, a man. I, I'm a man who can stand on what he got to say. But you didn't do that with Shondrika. You a man who stands on what he got to say, so why didn't you tell Shondrika, yeah, I said it and what? Yeah, I said it and what? That's not what you did, Patrick, okay? Little bitch maid, okay? But I don't know how I feel about that because you are Candy's cousin. So I don't know if it's just like, I don't know how I feel about him telling Candy. Like, and then too, Shondrika low-key let it out because she was like, well, you said that didn't give a fuck either. He was like, when did I say that? She was like, it was a while ago. So basically a while ago when y'all were um fucking <laughs> basically putting in, y'all was having pillow talk and you were saying the same thing that Shondrika was saying. He was like, that's not what I said. I said that, you know, Candy and Todd, they got so much on their plate. They're they're doing a lot. I.E. I.E. O.O.G. is last on their radar. <laughs> like, Patrick, 
You basically did the, the the professional way of saying they don't give a fuck. They just got so much on their plate. You know, they got other things that's keeping them busy. That that was the professional way of saying they don't give a fuck about the restaurant. Okay? We get it. We get it, Patrick. Um, but yeah, so she walks away. Um, what else did happen? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, Dominique goes over to see her, her boo thing, Brandon. He got this apartment with this damn grandma couch that he clearly got from either his mama. Like she had the extra couch in storage or something because that is grandma's couch. Okay. Uh, grandma mall couch. <laughs> uh, but he had typical bachelor pad. It literally was like a typical bachelor pad. She walks in with her dog and she sits down with him and she, she loves putting that, just like that little high pitched voice. Like, oh my God, like, it's just such a good thing with Brand, wait, what's his name? Brandon. And I was able to meet his family. It was just like, she just loves it. Like, she just loves putting on that high pitch, you know, that Porsche, that Porsche is, you know, stuff. And you just, you know, um. Um, oh my god, like this is just so I just Brandon, he just wanted me to meet his family. Like, oh my god, like I love them. Like I could just really picture myself in their family. Like, girl, but nonetheless, Brandon, he is he is putting the pressure. Mm -mm 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 -ah, pressure. Like, hey, that's my jam. Ari Linux, y'all. I love Ari Linux. Okay. But nonetheless, keep y'all eyes on me. Eyes on me apply. Get it, don't forget it, don't be timid now. Love up on it, anyone. Okay. Dun, 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 ah. Pressure, that's my song. Anyways, yeah, Brandon's applying a little bit of pressure when it comes to uh, uh Dominique. And he was like basically saying he feels like because she came and met the family that they, that means like, oh, you know, she really taking me serious. You know, she met the family by proxy of being there for your birthday. Like this, she didn't even go to meet the family. She go, she went to be there for your birthday. Like that's what happened, Brandon. Um, and so he just kind of feels like, man, you came, you know, my, my, my family loved you. She's like, yeah, I loved your family too. And so she was just like, I got some good news. And she's like, I'm going to London. And he, she was like, I'm just super excited. So now he's kind of like, well, you know, that's cool. Uh, basically, basically Dominique is using OLG as her stepping stone. I ain't mad at it, boo-boo. You work and have your little backup plan with OLG and then you go on tour. Uh, she couldn't say, but she told Candy uh, it was Rick Ross. Uh, so she's going on tour to London with Rick Ross. Uh, but now that she's going on tour, it kind of ended up causing them to have a conversation about where this is taking them. So they, she ended up taking him out to lunch or whatever. And she gave him this little, this little drink. And he was like, Oh, you really do love me. She's like, so you think I love you? Cause I got you two juices. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like Dominique, I definitely feel like is moving more on the, you know, cautious side with Brandon, but Brandon has decided he want to jump on the deep end. Like, like Shondrick is like, let me dip my toe in and wade in the water a little bit. And that nigga said, I'm gonna go on the diving board and bitch, I'm jumping head first. Uh, so now he's basically having a conversation with her about like, you know, what this mean for us? You know, she's asking him like, okay, so while I'm gone, like, are you gonna be talking to anybody else? And he was like, I mean, no. And so she's like, well, I'm not talking to anybody else. And he was like, so what are you saying? And so she's like. If I'm not talking about anybody else and you're not talking to anybody else, what well, does that mean? Like we exclusive or whatever? And he was like, I think so. So basically Dominique was like, did I just get a boyfriend? Like, yeah, did I just get a boyfriend? And y'all not doing a really good job of keeping this shit under wraps because you know, y'all are coworkers. I and also not just coworkers, but manager, like boss and employee. So y'all not supposed to be finagling around, especially Brandon, you want to sit there and tell boldface, you know, the lies, <laughs> the lies, the lies, as you like to say, of, oh, you know, we, we can keep it professional. We know we can stay away from each other at the restaurant. But literally two days ago, y'all asses was playing tonsil hockey in the goddamn bathroom, literally in front of everybody. So pff, nigga, please. So, um, um, uh, so uh basically they're official but it's like i don't 
know if it's official or if it's like, are y'all exclusive as boyfriend and girlfriend? Or is this like, oh, we exclusively talking? Because people know there's a difference. Like, it, there's a difference between like, oh, we boyfriend and girlfriend. Oh, like, okay, you know, we're exclusively talking as in like, you know, I'm cutting off my side hoes, you know, and you know, he, you might be cutting off, you, you know, you weaning off your, your roster basically. And you're starting to become more, you know, uh, concentrated on one person. That's what to me exclusive, you know, means. But if y'all are saying boyfriend and girlfriend, go ahead, Dominique, you do you, boo boo. Hopefully it works out. Um, so, uh, they was kissing and stuff all up in the, um, in the car and whatnot. Brandon with them big old lips. He looked like he definitely, you know, uh, definitely know, know how to eat, the, gotta eat the booty like groceries. Like, he definitely know he look like he eat the groceries, okay? Okay, okay, and the cookie monster. Brandon looked like he, Brandon looked like he, he okay in that apartment, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Um, but he got a little bird chest though. He, I'm sorry, we had on that little white bitter, and then when she walked in, I said, Oh, nigga, you was you low key catfish stuff. Because I don't know why I thought his arms and chest was bigger than that, but bro, you got a bird chest. I'm gonna need you to work on that. Um, so, um, what happened? So, Shondrika went over to go see Brian. Y'all know he got suspended, but he's been working on his soul food egg rolls. But the thing is, it takes money to make money. So, bitch, I got to go back to work. Um, and so she's telling him about the the uh, the team building and, you know, also the team building and also trying to figure out who snitched on me. Like, who went and told Candy and Todd that I was talking shit, okay? But it's like, Shondrika, you said it. <laughs> but at the point, Shondrika feels like, <laughs> I said it, but so did y'all, bitch. So... Brian, he's going to go, you know, he's not going to hold the mule. He's going to show up and, you know, get his motherfucking job back. So, Philip, uh, Candy, Todd, and Don Juan, they're at the other Blaze location, not the other OLG location, and you can see a difference. Let me tell you. You can see, you can see a difference in establishments. Why is it that y'all got this hood booger you know, ghetto fired OLG with the damn sign looking like it belongs in a funeral home with the the floral oil OLG. But then y'all get to this one, and this one looks like a a, a nice decent location. Like, bruh, yeah, it should not it should not be like this. All y'all's locations should be up to up to code and standard. Like, come on now. But when they walked in, I said, damn, this is a difference, ain't it? <laughs> Um, but they were sitting out talking to Philip and Don Juan and Philip is steady trying to push that. Oh, Brian, Brian needs to get, he needs to get fired. He needs to get fired. And Candy's like, first of all, one, slow your roll because you ain't in control of firing nobody. Two, Brian is one of our like most favorite people come to see Brian. He was, you know, people loved him behind the bar and everything. So you can't just, you know, try to like cut somebody off that fast because, you got into one little argument. So that's why everybody's kind of having this, you know, raising our eyebrow a bit with Philly because it's like, damn, everybody was doing a lot worse stuff. And here you are ready to just, you know, you're fired Donald Trump is ass when he really didn't even do anything that bad. Okay. Yeah. He talked out the side of his neck a little bit, but bitch, weren't they all like, weren't they all? And you need to admit that you also were throwing gasoline on the fire when it came to that situation. So Candy's like, look, after the team building, if things still go sideways, we're going to give Brandon the opportunity to choose whether to, you know, keep Brian on or to get rid of him. And they're basically trying to give Brandon the opportunity to kind of get into his managerial, you know, power. Like Brandon Lowkey is bitch made when it comes to, you know, acting like a manager. Like he don't really act like a manager. So we see the scene uh, where everybody's getting together for Riley's birthday and had a cute little cake and whatnot. <sighs> Y'all. Can we talk about Riley for a second? Y'all know what I'm about y'all know what I'm about to say. Y'all know what I am um about to say. Okay. Y'all got too much access. I'm sorry, too much access for that, for that, you know, to have happened. That's all I'm going to say. 
and that we candy got too much money and access all I'm saying okay but um Todd mama Joyce was right Todd bring your ass in the back of the kitchen because you know y'all want to talk about old oh, things need to get fixed and you want to talk about oh you know you know one of the four kids gonna take over the restaurant and mama Joyce was like well in order for them to take over the restaurant they probably should see you know the operations how it works they should you know start from the kitchen and he was like I don't believe you know to be the owner of the restaurant like you need to know all of that really really so now you're taking shortcuts and right now Todd is exactly the type of man that I hate which is you want to be the boss but you want to be a boss without a plan or without any um you just want to be a boss without any order and you're sitting there wondering why this restaurant is going down the way it is but you don't even take time or like diligence into seeing how things are working in the order events of the restaurant and so everybody's looking at you like Todd because you're the one taking charge with the restaurants, right? And Kayla, everybody's sitting there like Todd, take your ass in. And Mama Joyce is like, this is why I can't. She can be. See, this is why I can't stand Todd. The way she, I can't stand Todd. You know, don't nobody ever half of Atlanta don't like Todd. Yeah, all the all all of the aunties are just like fuck that nigga. Like basically, <laughs> so he was like, I'm not going back there. What I need to go back there for? And it's like. You really tell me you can't go back there for one day. And so she's like, you need to see what the kitchen is working with back there. Like how it is, like what they could be struggling with. Like Todd, how do you want the restaurant to get better? And you're not even, even willing to go back there and see how the shit works. Like that's your issue. Like I can't, like you want to be a boss, but you really don't want to do the actual work. You just want the motherfucking title. Like dudes like that get under my skin. Um... So team building, uh, everybody gets there. They do some cute little, uh, some little games and Philip is still acting real. Mm, I don't want to talk to Brandon. Mm, you know, I'm not really feeling him. You know, Philip is just giving real. I don't like the Queens, you know, I don't like the real feminized gays. So, uh, Candy purposely chose, you know, Shandrika, Philip, um, Brian, Torn, all of them to be on the same team. Cause they need to know how to work together. Um, we know how this goes. Basically, th they rigged the games of like setting it up for basically the teams to tie. But it was cute. I loved watching like Mama Joyce and uh, Bertha and uh, Nora like do the sidebars and how they was talking. They were like, "Ooh, I just love Brian." Brian was killing me with that with that toupee when he was. He said Mama Joyce looking like a fish out of water, and he was just shaking his head. You know, <laughs> and that little toupee up top just shaking his head. You know. But I, it was good. Like, you could tell, like, the morale was definitely getting better. Um, Torin and Philip even had, you know, cool little, you know, high five, slap high five here. Um, and Brian was, Philip was loosening up because, Philip, what you seem to not want to understand, as much as it's like them, you feel like they are resisting, you know, getting this new order or resisting this new line of, you know, uh, rule set that's coming in. You also have to be receptive and also bring it to them, approach them in a way that makes them want to be receptive. Like, it's not just, oh, it's all on them to just take in everything that you put out there. No, like it's a meet in the middle. So they do their little games. It was cute. Um, and uh, Candy give them all $100. <laughs> Candy, if you want to give me $100, cash app in the description box. <laughs> Thank you, because I bitch, I know you got it. <laughs> um, so then we basically end the episode with, um, we end the episode with Brandon and Philip talking to Brian. And Brian comes and, you know, uh, Brandon basically lets him know, like, look, we suspend you because you was kind of talking reckless, bruh. And he was like, we just got to make sure, you know, you're doing good because before, you know, the break, you were one of our best employees. Then when you came back, it was kind of like, yo, who is this? And he was, and Brian was like, well, you know, I'm not going to lie. You know, I apologize. I was kind of talking, you know, I was talking a little crazy, you know, uh, the new rules. I just hadn't got used to them yet. But it's like, Brandon, you know, Philip, you also too was ignoring the fact that Brandon wasn't even following the damn rules and he's the manager like y'all keep looking for the employees to do stuff but y'all don't be looking at the managers to be doing the same shit either like they set the precedence 
So Brian, you know, he apologized. He's like, you know, I was talking a little smack. You know, I was talking a little smack. And so I apologized. And Philip actually apologized and was like, you know what? I I, made, I, poured, I poured a little gasoline on the situation. You know, I wasn't doing my job necessarily probably in um, de-escalating. So, you know, if I made you feel a certain way, I hate when people do If, no, nigga, you did. Um, you know, you know, I apologize. So they kind of hit the little, you know, reset button, you know, kumbaya for right now. <laughs> for right now so we'll see and that's kind of where the episode ended like it wasn't a lot that went on this episode like i said but it was a cute little it was a cute little thing thing um so yeah y'all tell me how you feel about the episode how do you guys feel about todd not wanting to work in the back of the restaurant uh do you guys feel like philip you know might be one of those gays that's you know um the zale type oh i'm masculine you know um yeah that's it. That's Candy and the gang. I will see you guys later. Bye.